Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Kicking It With Paran. I'm here with Paresh. Very uh, thank you so much for joining us My at pleasure. GTC. You know, you had to come all the way from San Francisco or San Jose or wherever you live <laughs> to GTC. Uh, but uh, that was a long commute, man. Long commute. It took me a know. while. I mean, it was a shorter <laughs> commute for me from Seattle. So exactly. Uh, but no, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're at the Oracle booth at GTC, showing off some of our new instances, new offerings, uh, HPC in the big data space as well. Uh, can you sort of uh, give us an overview of what you do and, and uh, what's NVIDIA talking about at the conference? Sure, yeah, so I run uh, product marketing for our accelerated computing business. Uh, that includes all of our data center GPUs and our accelerated computing platform. And I've been with NVIDIA for four years now, and I've seen, uh, I've seen our impact to the world grow exponentially in these four years, uh, starting with supercomputing, uh, then deep learning and, mach and machine learning, and now end-to-end -end data science. Uh, so I'm really excited, uh, and thanks for having me here today. Yeah, great. So um, are there any interesting things? I saw the keynote yesterday. Yep. The BMW thing was amazing. You know, it was uh, using, um, using your new rendering technology, right? RTX. Uh, RTX, using DirectX, right? Right. And uh, showing off sort of dynamic range and, uh, What's the future there? Like, that looks really cool. Like, yeah. just as an enthusiast, I would love to use it. So accelerated computing, as you know, is all about applications. Yeah. It's all about applications. Uh, we started off in scientific computing, accelerating the traditional simulations and, uh, and applications that are do used to understand the fundamental science. Uh, and uh, we now have over 127 uh, supercomputers that are GPU accelerated uh, in the top 500 list. Uh, last year, last year we won uh, the Nobel Prize of Computing, if you will. Right. Uh, uh, also known as Gordon Bell. Yep. And uh, yep. this was for two of the most amazing research works uh, uh, that achieved both achieved exaflops of computing power. Right. Uh, there was one uh, work to uh, understand how to combat opioid addiction, right. uh, which is a big problem today. Uh, and there was an another project that was to understand extreme weather patterns uh, as climate change is happening. So that was supercomputing. Uh, and over the last few years, uh, deep learning and AI has picked up uh, and some amazing applications. Uh, we've seen how uh, AI is now performing superhuman accuracy at a range of tasks. So what, uh, uh, you know, computer vision was one of the first ones with uh, neural nets like ResNet 50, uh, which I'm sure you remember yeah. from, uh, from your yeah, history. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a Microsoft. Uh, at Microsoft yeah. days. I mean, it's, it's literally like a customer comes to me, you know, wants to run. TensorFlow, whatever the benchmark we end up using is ImageNet and ResNet you know, 50. with ResNet 50, and run it on a GPU, exactly. See how long it takes. It's kind of like the universal like. It's become now. that universal sort of benchmark. It's kind of uh, like the, become the lin pack of. It's of, exactly. Of, you know, yeah, AI. Yeah, the, the interesting thing to note though is you know AI is moving uh, into all sorts of use cases. So like ResNet 50 is an important benchmark for computer vision. Some of the other important work that's happening today are in fields like natural language processing. Right. So you're trying to understand when a user is asking a question, trying to compose the right answer, right. summarizing text, understanding sentiments in social feeds and so on. Uh, and some of the state of the art models right. uh, that are being used today are, are things like BERT that just came uh, last year, uh, open sourced by Google. And, and, and there's a big difference in the complexity of these models. So ResNet 50, for example, is like 25 million parameters. But BERT, the state of the art natural language processing, is 250 million parameters. Yeah, I mean, Resna 50. So a factor is, of 10x. You know, quite old, right? So 10x. At this point, anyway. Are you seeing, are you seeing a lot of these uh, use cases? Like, is, is, is it mostly like really cutting edge research centers? Is it enterprises also dibbling and dabbling into this technology? Uh, you know, is it running on prem? Yep. Are customers going to the cloud? What's the, what's the ecosystem look like here and what type of customers? Because I mean, a lot of the research work is obviously happening at the big labs, Lawrence Livermore and some of those other guys, but where where's sort of the, the more like enterprisey stuff? Is that sure. what's happening around that ecosystem? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. So the, the pace at which the research progresses from uh, the labs uh, and the research labs within the enterprises to broad adoption in the use cases is just tremendous. Right. So we were just talking about BERT for natural language processing, uh, state of the art, just released last year. 
and I'm getting so many customers that are asking about GPU accelerated version of BERT because they want to use it in their customer uh, service uh, scenarios. Right. Uh, they want to use it in how they interact and engage with their customers. And, uh, and, we, and we released a GPU accelerated version of BERT uh, on NGC. Right. Uh, so people can download and do transfer learning and train their own models and use it for all sorts of use oh, cases. That's great. So you talk about NGC. I love NGC. I think it's the best way to quickly get up and running using Docker containers and, a, and an image on a cloud provider. Now, for viewers that don't know, NGC also supports deploying on Oracle Cloud. Exactly. Um, and so, Oracle Cloud infrastructure, we've been working with you guys for I don't know how long. Uh, and you know, we have uh, your Volta ge generation GPUs. Uh, actually, last year at Munich, we announced yep. uh, you know SGX2. You were amongst uh, the first ones to yeah, do that. Yeah, we were the first ones to do that. In fact, we have a demo right behind me showing that off. Uh, and we're sort of seeing the progression of like. You know, when we, because in Oracle Cloud, we have P100s, we have Voltas, and we have obviously the new generation XGP, uh, V132 gig, uh, right. you know, GPUs. And we're seeing the progression of the performance where it's just orders of magnitude more and more and more. So, you know, I would encourage the viewers to go in and try out NGC literally within five minutes. That's the thing I love about NGC. And so, actually, if you could talk about what's the future of NGC look like? Yeah, so that, that's. Like, Am I going to be able to deploy like NGC as an appliance somewhere one day, maybe, or can NGC be a native service on a cloud sure. provider? Like, what's the so NGC is our hub for accelerated right. software, uh, and we started off with containers because these containers were so hard. These application software were so hard to just package together with the right libraries, right dependencies, and so we started with containers for our deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch and also some of the key HPC applications. Uh, but from there, we've now grown NGC to a hub of all kinds of stuff. Uh, so we launched at GTC over 50 models, uh, pre-trained models that are available for users to either use directly or to use transfer learning to customize the models on their own data sets. So kind of like a marketplace of algorithms. It's not exactly a marketplace, it's basically a hub. Uh -huh. It's just a place we're not selling software uh, right, so you at NGC. Right, so you it's want to commercialize where, the, the hub. It's right. a, yeah, it's a place where people can go and find software that they can right. download uh, and, and they can run it uh, on their favorite cloud uh, right. as well as on their other sort of form factors they want so to can enjoy. I let, maybe, maybe I can trick you a little bit. Sure. Is there a possibility where NGC can deploy uh, natively directly to a cloud provider in the future where you won't even have to leave NGC to be able to deploy anything. Through NGC, maybe you're able to go deploy a cloud environment. Is that going to be a possibility in the future, you think? Right now, we are focused on basically getting all kinds of software. Right. All kinds of software and simplifying. Frankly, there's a big challenge still. So while we have 50 containers, uh, that address a range of workloads from deep learning to high performance computing data analytics. But there are all sorts of different workflows that we want to provide the software for and make it easy for people to go to NGC, pull the right software, right containers, and then do the work. Uh, so right now that continues to be our main focus. Okay, sounds good. Cool, well, I appreciate you stopping by. I know you're busy, so I'll let you go uh, and uh, you know, uh, thanks for continuing the great work with us. And uh, are you sure you don't want to announce the next GPU on the show? It could be grand groundbreaking. What's it called, Einstein? <laughs> maybe? Uh, maybe Jensen? It's just called J100 maybe? I don't know. Yeah, so it's, it's not about GPU as Jensen <laughs> pointed out. It's about GPU along with our software. So the CUDA X. Buy, the more you save. The more you buy, the more you save. And CUDA X yeah, makes sure that the performance keeps on improving even on the same GPU. Right. Awesome. All right. Well, All right, that's a good on. note to end. Thank you so much. Always again. a pleasure to chat with you. Take yep. care. Thank you, and we'll catch you on the next episode.